932 on News Radio 680 WPTF. This is Mitch Kokai sitting in for Rick and Donna Martinez on You Don't Say. And our special guest is Tony Williamson of Mandolin Central. And Tony, just a few minutes ago, people are just joining us. We were talking about the fact that this particular radio station, WPTF, has a significant role in the history of bluegrass music as we're getting ready for the IBMA Festival to come back. Uh, the Monroe Brothers played here early in their career as uh, after having split from Bill Monroe, Flat and Scruggs played here. Other big groups as well. Is that correct? It has a long and storied history of supporting these uh, formative bands, Bill and Charlie Monroe during the late 30s. They cut some of their first music in Charlotte and played it here on the radio on Saturday night. And then, like you say, Flat and Scruggs. Also, the Blue Sky Boys were part of the WPTF team at one time. And I grew up listening to uh, Homer Briarhopper. Ah. And so uh, it's it's been a great station for bluegrass. Uh, Mitch, I think one of the things that really made the appeal in those days was there was a general migration from the farm to the factory. And as people got into the urban situations, a lot of them weren't used to it. Uh, And even with the second and third generation, they still longed for the old home place. And this music that we call bluegrass is full of the nostalgia of the old home and living on the farm and uh, and all the wonderful ideas of uh, carefree life. And I understand that you have a new song that might just fit into that uh, that whole sentimental feeling. Well, I've just written this song. You know, the great thing about bluegrass songs, it, it doesn't take a lot of consideration to write a song. I actually wrote this song while I was driving by one of my old hiking grounds. I was... Uh, uh, and it all just came to me all at once. If, if you don't mind, I'll uh, try that out on you. This will be a uh, premiere here. It's called... Uh, You're hearing it first on WPTF. Yep. I hope I can get through it. It's called Hickory Mountain. I used to love to hike on Hickory Mountain I'd listen to the trees in the wind I'd build my fire and stay the night Wake up fresh around daylight Head on up the mountainside again I'm going up on Hickory Mountain Where the hardwood trees reach to the sky But I get there, such disappointment Cause there ain't no hickories left on Hickory Mountain (laughs) Today I traveled back to Hickory Mountain I was dreaming about them nature trails up there But just as far as I could see, I could not find a single tree. Houses, houses, houses everywhere. Now each house had some bushes by the driveway. And a funny plastic rock to hide the well. Every house was just alike. How could you find your own at night? My Hickory Mountain Woods have gone too. Well, I'm headed up on Hickory Mountain. Where the hardwood trees watch reach the sky When I get there, it's disappointing Cause there ain't no hickories left on Hickory Mountain Oh no, there ain't no hickories left on Hickory Mountain I was just listening to that sustain as it continued to play out. Yes, you you heard it here first, folks. The first performance ever of that new song, Hickory Mountain. It's called Hickory Mountain, and it's it's a happy protest song. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Williamson of Mandolin Central joining us. If you were just tuning in in the middle and thinking, am I really on 680 AM? Yes, you are, 680 AM, which... In the the old years of the station, you would have heard quite a bit of songs like that, uh, bluegrass from the the Monroe Brothers yeah. or Flat and Scruggs, mm-hmm. Blue Sky Boys. Uh, yeah. This was this was the typical fare for this time of day on uh, on, on six eighty a.m. Wasn't it? That's right. That's right. I think one of the programs was called, was called Farm and Fun Time. 
Very, very yeah. interesting. So we were talking about the mandolins and the, the, your particular mandolin, which was designed by Lloyd Lore. Bill Monroe found one in a barber shop. Did you say in Florida? Yeah. A barber shop in uh-huh. Florida picked it up, uh-huh. learned it. And, and if I remember correctly from, from one of our previous conversations, that one of the reasons that the, the Lloyd Lore mandolin got to be so special was that other mandolin players heard Bill Monroe played their mandolins and said, mine doesn't sound quite like that. And so they started to seek these particular mandolins out. That's right. And when, when I was growing up, I tried, I traded so many mandolins. I probably went through 30 or 40 different mandolins before I got one that really sounded right. But early on, I had uh, seen Bill Monroe's mandolin. And as a young man, he had let me play it. I was about 14 or 15 years old. And what a sound it had. And in those days... You couldn't really find a mandolin, a new one, that sounded like that. The new Gibsons were expensive and shiny, but they did not have that sound. So we all looked really, really long and hard to find an old mandolin in those days. Nowadays, Mitch, it's kind of a different story. There are, It's a renaissance of mandolin builders throughout the country and in foreign countries. Uh, there are some very good instruments that uh, a person can find without having to mortgage the farm that will have a great sound. Let's give people a little bit of, of background. If they are hearing us talking about the fact that IBMA, the big festival, is coming up at the end of this month in downtown Raleigh. Hopefully, uh, fingers crossed, we'll have better weather than we did last year, and people <laughs> will actually be able to go out and hear all the music uh, taking place on the street in addition to in the convention center. But for folks who know the term bluegrass but really can't distinguish it from other types of music, what sort of are the, the basic principles of, of bluegrass music? Bluegrass music, you're going to have a certain number of instruments, and it's usually the mandolin, guitar, banjo, bass, and fiddle. You also have the tempos a little higher, and uh, the, 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 the pitches, the pitch of the key, the, people, the singers sing a little higher. And, you know, in country music, country music is probably the most similar to bluegrass, uh, you'd definitely be able to tell the difference in the rhythm because bluegrass has more edge. More, they call it drive. Uh, it's like uh, I think one writer back in the day said it was folk music with overdrive. <laughs> and also a lot of the material is about, like like our last song, is about nostalgia for the old life on the farm. And and there's other themes as well, but they tend to have death. A, a more, yeah, they <laughs> very they, morbid songs sometimes. Yeah, there's a lot of morbid songs, the ballads that tell a story, but there's also uh, uh, the gospel thing. Uh, you don't have as much like in country music. You have a lot more interpersonal relationship between men and women. There's not as much of that in bluegrass. It's really a more uh, ballad folk music type theme to it. So the thing about bluegrass is. Once you hear it, and you'll understand it. And a lot of times the banjo leads the charge on that. People notice the banjo first because it has that unique driving sound with all those notes coming off of that instrument. And, and, and a banjo's loud. They're loud, yeah. <laughs> that's why you have to have a mandolin like this to be able to play in a bluegrass band because other mandolins you won't be able to be heard over the banjo. In fact, yeah. uh, I, I know that one of the common... Uh, jokes uh, uh, among mandolin players is trying to find a banjo killer, something that's loud enough that will kill right. that banjo. Yeah, sound. that's uh, that's a that's a good way to promote an instrument to sell it. This one will kill a banjo. <laughs> uh, another thing that's of interest, I think, with a lot of bluegrass, you perform as you mentioned with your brother. You're going to be performing at the IBMA Festival with him, the Williamson Brothers, uh, Friday afternoon. Is that, is uh, that Friday right? at twelve fifteen at the Davy Street Stage? I think that's September thirtieth. It's the yes. last day of September. And uh, Davy Street, uh, there on the corner of Davy and Fayetteville, there'll be a stage. It's free to the public. Around 12, 15, it'd be a great lunch break for those of you who work downtown. And for those of you who take the day off to enjoy bluegrass, we'll see you there. Yeah, and I bring that up partly to help promote the fact that you're going to be playing, but also to uh, remark that uh, sibling uh, groups, groups of brothers, groups uh, that have been playing together for years and years, seems to be pretty common 
in bluegrass, family bands that have they've just grown up playing the music, and now they, they, they make that into, if not their job, and sometimes it is their job, but at least an avocation that takes them around from state to state and, and uh, large sections of the country. Is that a fairly common theme throughout the history of bluegrass? Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's part tradition and part cultural. I think siblings tend to speak in similar tones and also with the uh, same dialect, but you grow up singing with somebody. Like I sing with my brother. It's so, it fits like a glove. And I sing with other people, and you have to really work at it. But when I have my brother sitting beside me to sing the tenor, oh, man, it's, it's just effortless. You also, in addition to performing with your brother, have recorded uh, albums of your own. You have been a touring musician, and you've also been a, a, a mentor to a number of mandolin players. We're chatting once again with Tony Williamson of Mandolin Central. And uh, we were talking before the, the program started about some of the interesting folks you've had a chance to mentor or work with over the years. What have been some of your more interesting mandolin-related experiences? Well, I remember um, being a part of Merle Fest, which is the festival up in the mountains that uh, was started in honor of Doc Watson and his son Merle. And I was put in charge of a little program I call Mandomania. And I remember uh, probably the mid to late 80s asking a young 14-year-old mandolin player that was hanging around my uh, mandolin booth to join us on my Mandomania. So there was uh, some of the greats of mandolin there on stage. Sam Bush was there, Roland White, uh, um, I forget, Mike Marshall maybe, uh, Anyway, there was a whole group of us, and this young kid got up there, 14 years old, and just tore it up. We all just looked at each other. What is this? You know, and his name was Chris Thiele. Ah, so Chris Thiele, who, uh, if if anyone uh, was in the Chapel Hill area on Monday night, he performed a solo show just before launching into becoming the new host of Prairie Home Companion. He has come a long way since that uh, that day at uh, in Wilkesboro. Yeah, and, and I'm uh, very proud of Chris. He's he's really a tremendous young man, and really has uh, uh, he's he's a really good, solid person. You know, a lot of these really famous people get a little bit of the big head, but he is uh, he is very focused and very down to earth, and really a good, solid individual. And that's true in a lot of music. You know, a lot of these players that I hang out with at these festivals are they're just really good people, and they play because they love it. If people are thinking about going to the IBMA events that are going uh, on in the last week of September, and then that uh, October first, which is the Saturday. Uh, they've got the opportunity to go to the street festivals. They've got a chance, if they want, earlier in the week to go to a, a number of locations in downtown Raleigh for this bluegrass ramble. If someone's thinking about it, what would you, as a as a pro and someone who's been through these sorts of festivals, what would you recommend that a newbie to bluegrass check out? Oh, I would definitely hit the uh, the the street stages. There'll be such wonderful bands there uh, all over the downtown at the various uh, streets. Uh, then come into the convention hall. There's a lot of programs there up on the second floor of the convention hall that are free to the public. In fact, I'm doing one myself on Saturday at noon uh, on the second floor of the convention hall. I'm doing a vintage instrument program, and I'll have a number of these Lloyd Lore Mandolins as well as uh, IBMA Banjo Player of the Year, Charlie Cushman, will be there with a collection of banjos. And our friend Darren Aldridge will be there with some great guitars. So we'll be talking about vintage instruments. And then there'll be other programs there that you can just go from room to room and enjoy. One thing I would recommend is I'm not a big iPhone guy, but uh, uh, there is an app. If you go to IBMA.org, you can download an app to tell you the entire festival schedule. And, and I've used that before, and it, it does come in very handy because yeah. you can see, because there are a lot of things going on, and there might be something you want to see. You're not really sure of the time. You can yeah. definitely find it on that app. Uh, we're going to have a chance also to, to chat with you a little bit more about the, the, the particular events that you're going to be doing at IBMA. But before we do that, I, I want to switch gears just very briefly and ask you, you've been following this type of music for a number of years. What are some of the more interesting things that you're hearing today? Is there something something new or a, a renaissance of the old? What What's striking you most about the music today? You know, I uh, 
have noticed a change in rhythms and a change of interpretation. Um, I've got a little piece here is, uh, yeah. that m might demonstrate this. Uh, uh, recently, now, uh, there's a great guitar player named Rad Andy. His real name is Hardy Williamson. He's my son. He lives in Asheville. But he and I did a wedding at Farrington House there in Chatham County. And the bride had asked for the hymn, Be Thou My Vision, as the recessional. Well, as you know, the recessional is after they say, I do, and everybody's headed to the champagne. You need something lively. And Be Thou My Vision is a three-quarter slower, beautiful song, but three-quarter and slower. So I turned to Red Andy, and he said, well, let's just jazz it up a little bit. So would you like to hear a little bit of what we did? I'd love to. Once again, you got to listen to that sustain at the end there on that Lloyd Laura Gibson. Tony Williamson yeah. of Mandolin Central. We're going to talk a little bit more about IBMA and how you can hear Tony and see some of these uh, Lloyd Laura mandolins, learn a little bit more about the music coming up at the end of this month. That, as you don't say, continues.